No, I don't think I need those flowers there. They're not really doing a lot. I just want to shove the pretty flowers that my dad got me. Look how nice they are. Ow! Ow! <laughs> To my channel so today I'm pretty much only filming because look at my hair look at it see this style you think I'm ever going to be able to do this again no so I needed to take lots of photos and I needed to film a video <laughs> I didn't actually have a video topic planned necessarily for today I do have a couple of projects that I'm working on but then I stopped and I had a thought. I often get asked how I create my vintage outfits, you know, how I get the idea to pair things together and how I create sort of a whole look, if you were. And I'm also asked a lot how I get my inspiration, my vintage life inspiration. So I thought it would be really fun to combine the two things together and to just create one little video explaining kind of where I get my inspiration from and how I curate that and then a few different methods of how I create a vintage outfit. Oh, I thought it was a cat and then I realised it was a pigeon. There we go. Oh my god, it's actually sunny. Oh, are you kidding me? I just took photos. <laughs> Why? Oh no, the sun's gone again. Oh. Well, that was short-lived. Okay, so when you are first foraying into the wonderful land of vintage, hello, nice to meet you. Very, very welcome. Step in, step in. Um, I know it can be quite overwhelming. There is so much media out there, and in a way this can kind of almost be counterproductive because it just overwhelms you with the scope of everything that you could choose from that you could take inspiration from and kind of just makes you go <sighs> ah. but but when finding inspiration i like to start with visuals i am a very visual person I like colours and textures and images that I can sort of keep in my brain and to do that I tend to use one of two apps. So to organise my visual thoughts, um, my favourite app is an app called We Heart It and not many people seem to have heard of this which always makes me a little bit upset because it is fantastic, it's a really good image sharing app where you can create little collections of images into different sort of sections. So I have a load of collections on there. I use We Heart It all the time. I've been using it for years. I think the site is really well laid out. It's very pink, which makes me very happy. And I have lots of different collections. So I have ones for interior design, which I consulted when I was doing my little room makeover. I have vintage one, I have a fashion one, I have a hairstyling one, um, I have one for food, since I'm getting quite into baking it's good to keep all of my cake inspirations in there, and I can basically just curate and create a lot of different collections for different moods. Now if you are someone who likes multiple different eras, so say you're very into both the 1950s and the 1980s, just saying that because I watched an amazing Jawbreaker style analysis and the style in that was supposedly like 50s meet 80s which was kind of cool um, but yeah say you like two different areas you can create two different style boards um, with different images and then you can just search so if you like for example the costume design of a particular film search that into the image app if you enjoy specific actors or actresses, search them. If you just really want a broad inspiration file, you can just type in 1950s, 1980s, 1920s, or other things. Or if you want to get incredibly broad, you can just search vintage to start with, and then you will probably gravitate towards a certain era, people just seem to tend to do that and so once you kind of figure out what those eras are you'll be able to tell by either the image description or the tags underneath the image then you can kind of hone in on that. 
another app that I use is Yes. I finally started using Pinterest because all the cool kids were there and they had a lot of nice images. I mainly use that one to find vintage adverts because Pinterest has a lot of vintage adverts which I really, really like. Um, and they are a great source of inspiration for me as well. And when you're searching for inspiration, whether it's for interior design, life, food, style, you do not have to constrict yourself. So for example, if you're only, if you're looking for style inspiration, you don't have to just look at photos of clothes. Um, it's anything that really gets you going, anything that moves you or excites you or catches your eye and makes you go, ooh, that is something that you want to include into your inspiration board. So that can be loads of different things as well. It can be particular music that gives you a really nice vibe. It can be a particular film or a quote, a book, a magazine. There are so many things, a certain place, or location, um, the ocean, the meadows, cities, there are so many different places that you can find inspiration for whatever it is that you're trying to be inspired for and um, that's the really great thing about the internet, um, you know going back to what I said about the sheer scope of it can be overwhelming, it's also the best thing about this amazing tool that we have is that there is so much, you will probably never run out of things to look at and there was constantly fresh new things coming out even with regards to vintage eras that you will always be able to find different things that will inspire you. Once you have created your style inspiration pot, whether that's a playlist, image boards on different apps, uh, a list of films, a list of books, quotes. You've collected your aesthetics and you want to start creating outfits. Well, I've been dressing vintage for about four years now. Hmm. Yeah, about four years, coming up to four years. There are, to be honest, a lot of outfits where they're just kind of thrown and goes so I have you know go to dresses and you know skirt and top combinations that I can just put on and instantly go about my day but when I'm trying to you know I seriously want to think and create a specific outfit then there are some different methods that I can use. So the number one is colour palette so that is kind of what happened today I wanted to pick a dress that included the same or similar colour as my still very 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 bright pink freshly dyed hair since I haven't washed it yet and it's at its brightest um, and I wanted to include a dress that had those hues so you can see it has the pink running through this check pattern here. Um, this dress is from Hearts and Roses by the way and then I wanted to add more pink with this <laughs> Bubblegum Pink Petticoat by Doris Designs to kind of continue that pink theme in a little bit of a slightly subtler way because you can only see it when I sort of turn um, or spin, that's the only time you can sort of see the petticoat. Um, for the accessories you can see I've kind of gone with a cream and pearls look so I wanted to wear this beautiful antique brooch that my mum and my nanny got for me from an antiques fair and then because the brooch is gold and it has pearls in it I wore my favourite pearl earrings that I wear almost every single day and to match kind of the cream ivory shininess of the pearls I wore these gloves these are just satin um, wrist length gloves from Lindy Bop and then for my shoes, I am just wearing some silver Betty Page heels. This is elegant. Um, because I just think they're pretty. And I like the shape of them. There wasn't too much, too much meaning for that. I just wanted pretty photos 
in these shoes um, and they're really very comfortable and I liked the shape that they had. If I was really trying to continue the white I would have worn my white Dykeman shoes but I just really like these ones. Oh it's raining. The weather saga continues honestly. So colour palette is a great way to build an outfit whether that that you want everything to be fairly similar in shade or whether you want everything fairly neutral so say an all white outfit and then a pop of red with a belt or a flower or something like that um color palette is a really great way to build that or you can also build an outfit around you know wanting some slightly contrasting bold colors so for example yellow and blue or yellow and purple or i just really like yellow okay it goes with so many things people don't think it does and it does yellow and pink um what other uh red and blue or pink and purple that's not very contrasting is it pink and red some people think pink and red is disgusting but i think pink and red is such a gorgeous color combination it reminds me of valentine's day so that is my one of my favorite color combinations actually but yes building an outfit around a certain color aesthetic is a really great way to create an outfit the second way you can create an outfit is around a certain item of clothing. So, for example, if you have just gotten something new, or if you have got a really specific item that you really love, this can be honestly something as small as a brooch, or a belt, or a pair of shoes, or a pair of gloves, or it can be, you know, a skirt, a top, a dress, or a pair of trousers, or something like that. Um, creating an outfit by using that piece as your starting piece or sort of maybe the focus of your outfit and then kind of expanding outwards from there. So choosing pieces that will either enhance or contrast with that particular focus point of the outfit is a really good way to start. So for example, I recently got this parasol from British Retro, it's my favourite thing on God's green earth. It's just stunning, it's floral, it's really pretty white and coral. Um, so I created a whole outfit around using this parasol which you might have seen on my Instagram here. It's also going to be in a lookbook, don't worry. And I have a pair of shoes, I have a pair of shoes from Bait that will be coming at some point, probably not until mid-end March now, um, because I ordered the wrong size and I had to send them back and I got a return and I ordered what I thought would be the correct size and it wasn't, they were too big so now I have to send them back again but they have to go all the way to America and for some reason, even though it only takes about three days for them to get to America from here, like from America to here, um, it takes about ten days for it to get to here. America so yes but I have planned so many outfits specifically around those shoes so um, planning outfits around an item of clothing is another great way to build a look the third way that you can build an outfit is based on a person or a character or something like that so for example Disney bounding I have done two Disney bounding videos they are two of my favorites and you know um, putting the colour schemes or shapes of a particular character into an outfit. So this is a big thing in the event called Dapper Day, which they hold at Disney World, which is where people go dressed in usually fairly vintage-y um, Disney bounds, as they're called, where they use the shape or the colour scheme of a certain Disney character to create an outfit around. And that's a really great way to build an outfit. So I do that fairly often actually, um, I will look at certain characters, so a big inspiration for me is Pleasantville, um, the film, I actually really want to do a whole lookbook based around recreating similar outfits from Pleasantville, 
and that's a really really big inspiration for me so sometimes when I don't really know what to do I will look at either creators I admire or my favourite costuming moments from film and TV and I will kind of try and recreate a similar outfit. Another way to build a great outfit is to build it based on silhouette. So this is a good starting point is just, um, you know, do you want a relaxed vintage silhouette which involves jeans or trousers? Or do you want a business vintage silhouette with involving a skirt suit or a pencil skirt? Um, so that's a good starting point. Um, you can use that and then build on some of the previous tips that I've used um, to create an outfit. But silhouette is always a really great beginning. Um, because then you can also build it around things that you're comfortable in and things that flatter your particular body shape. I can't stop looking at my hands in the, in the mirrored camera because I know I'm moving them a lot. I really can't help it. That's just how I talk. Um, but, you know, in certain frames, because my screen is so bright, they just disappear and it's really funny. So that is all from me today. I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video and that hopefully you found some of my tips helpful or informative. Let me know what your favorite way to create outfits and where your big inspirations come from for your vintage wardrobe or interior or life um, by putting them in a comment down below. And you can also leave any suggestions that you have for comment, comment, content you would like to see from this channel in the future. I have quite a few ideas. I would like to make more of my Vintage Housewife series and I have a couple of lookbooks in the works. So do let me know what you would like to see. Please do remember to have courage and be kind and remember that all of your dreams can come true and I will see you in my next video. Bye.